right, the guys, this one is uh, 16 on um, the new homework set. And we're looking at a, um, what we call a T distribution, right? A, we well, know it's T because it says T instead of Z. But the way that we know it's a T distribution, the way you're going to know is you're not going to be given the population standard deviation, right? So that's the only difference between the two, really. They're both bell-shaped. Um, there's several T distributions, but a single Z distribution. So anyway, let's get through this first question. It's given us a sample of size 5, and it's given us all this other unnecessary information. Uh, it wants to know the number of degrees of freedom. All right, degrees of freedom is your sample size minus 1. So there's five uh, values in the sample, so the degrees of freedom is 4. All right, 5 minus 1 is 4. Okay. Now, a little bit beyond that. Now, um, we're going to do one of the following. Find the critical value Z alpha or find the critical value T alpha over 2. Or if neither one of these is appropriate, say that uh, neither the Z, which is the normal distribution, nor the T distribution, which again is just another uh, bell-shaped curve, uh, applies. All right, we got a confidence level 99%. That could be either one, Z or T n equals 25 all right that's the scary thing all right that's below 30 so we don't really know if it's bell shaped or not so if it's not bell shaped we can't use either one uh, alpha I mean uh, sigma the population standard deviation is unknown all right so now we're leaning towards T and now finally the population appears to be normally distributed all right because the population appears to be normally distributed that trumps the fact that we're taking a a um, sample size below 30 right if it's normally distributed we get a bell-shaped distribution uh, for the distribution the sample means no matter what right says so even though this isn't 30 we can still use the T or the Z distribution right and it's T in this case because uh, the population deviation is unknown so we're going to do part B right the uh, find the critical value z alpha over 2. All right, remember, alpha over 2 is 1 minus uh, this 99% divided by 2. So let's do that real quick. We'll find out what 1 minus 0.99% is. All right, so that's 0.01. Now divide that by 2, 0.005. All right, remember, this is alpha, 1 minus the confidence level is alpha. And then divide that by 2 and you get uh, alpha over 2. Alright, so we need to find the T alpha that goes with that. Now, for T, excuse me, the T distribution, what's different from Z is that this sample size comes into play. So we have a sample of size 25. That means we have uh, 24 degrees of freedom. Alright, now in your book, in that little fold out in your book, uh, it gives the T distribution and the critical T values uh, table here, A3. Now we're looking for the degrees of freedom to be 24. So we scroll down here until we find the 24. All right? And that's coming from 25 minus 1. All right? And now we're also looking for the one that has um, the alpha over 2 of 0 0.05. So we're looking back up here. There's 24. There's the area in one tail is 0 0.005, right? Or the area in two tails combined is 0 0.01, but that's the one we're looking for, 0 0.005. So 0 0.005 and 24 degrees of freedom is the 2.797. So 2.797 is our T alpha over 2. All right, let's do one more just to make sure we get it. Alright, um, cri critical Z, critical T, or s neither applies. Confidence level is 98%, so that could go to any of them. N equals 22, alright. So if it's the population is not normally distributed, that would be a problem, and that would let us say it's n uh, neither applies. But because of the normal distribution population, that doesn't matter, alright. That's unknown, so that means it's T. So we're looking for a critical T value, alright. So we need to 
take that 22, find our degrees of freedom, which is 21 now. So we got 21 degrees of freedom. The confidence level is 98%. So I need to take 1, subtract 98%, and then divide that by 2. Alright, so that's the column I'm looking for. This is the uh, area in the two tails, is 0.01. Alright, so there's the 21 uh, degrees of freedom, these four numbers right here. And then we're looking for the one area one tails 0.01. So we come down here, that's 2.518. So 2.518 is the T value. Alright, now the next one is actually asking us to do the test. Uh, test the effectiveness of garlic for lowering cholesterol. 50 subjects were treated uh, with garlic in a processed tablet form. So there's our sample size, 50. All right, 50 is bigger than 30, so we got that bell-shaped distribution of the sample mean. Cholesterol levels were measured before and after the treatment. The changes in their levels, the LDL cholesterol, have a mean of 5.6 and a standard deviation of 15.7. So we want to complete all these parts below. What's the best point estimate of the population mean um, in change? That's 5.6. The mean, the sample mean of the 50 subjects is our best estimate of the population mean. So put in that sample mean there. All right, next part. Construct a 90% confidence level uh, interval for the uh, estimate of the mean LDL cholesterol. All right, so we're looking for a confidence interval, the lower number and upper number for the population mean. All right, remember that's either the Z interval or the T interval when we're estimating the population mean. So when we come under statistics, go over to test, we're either doing Z interval or T interval. All right, Z interval if we, oops, Z interval if we know uh, the population standard deviation. T interval if we don't know it. So we're looking back through here. Are we given the population standard deviation anywhere in there? Right? No, we're given of these 50, we had a mean of 5.6 and a standard deviation of 15.7. That's the sample mean. That's not a population mean. I mean, a, sorry, a sample standard deviation. That is not the population standard deviation. Okay? So we have to understand that this is a T interval. All right, we're given statistics. He's asking, what's the sample mean? So that's the 5.6. What's the sample deviation? That's the 15.7. All right, what's the sample size? That was 50 subjects. And then what's your level of confidence? Our level of confidence is a 90% standard, 90% uh, confidence interval. So there's our numbers takes a little longer to do a T interval than a Z. So there's our numbers, 1.87, it wants it to one decimal place, 1.9 to 9.3. Alright, so that's a T interval. Does this interval, uh, confidence interval suggest about the effectiveness, effectiveness of the treatment? Alright, the confidence interval limits uh, contain zero, that's not true. Alright, so it's definitely not A. Confidence interval limits do not contain zero. It does not contain zero. So it's either going to be B or D. Suggesting the, the garlic treatment did not affect LDL. Suggesting that the garlic treatment did affect. Alright, that's what we want. Right. If it contained zero, then that would mean it may not have affected anything. These are the net uh, changes. So this is suggesting there was a change. That it did change uh, by some amount. Alright, not not zero milligrams. 